all of you good evening to all my viewers and all my listeners good evening to you in the name of jesus christ and uh, i'm coming through the waves of majestic christian television network just to continue my message on remembrance i strongly believe that god is setting somebody up to remember him or her if you be a child of god and you are listening to this broadcast i want you to know that this very month is a month of remembrance for you where you have been dumped and rejected and neglected where you've been looked down upon and where nobody have valued you thank god thank god thank god for such a situation god allowed those things in your life because he knows that he is the only one who is capable to remember you and to give to you according to your heart desire and one thing that god is going to do is that when he remembers you he gives you more than what you have even demanded for so do not be discouraged that nobody remembered you in your time of turbulence god had done it in such a way that he wants that the glory goes to him and to him alone because when people remember and they want to bless you how far really can they go except the hand of god comes upon their heart that's the time they can do it and do it very good but in this very season and in this very moment i want you to know that you have to wipe away your tears and look unto god who is the author and the finisher of your faith when he remembers you nothing can stop you being blessed everything that you have missed will come back when he remembers you You'll be blessed up, down, sideways, below, and, but no, and, and above. That is what his blessings will make in your life. So let's just pray. Father, I bless you tonight, and I bless you for all my viewers and my listeners, and I thank you that you are setting us up to bless us. Your, your purpose in our life is to bless us, Lord, to make sure that we are carriers of blessing so that we can continue to be blessing unto the work of God and unto humanity. Be glorified and may you grant us the ability to continue to wait until when the right time comes when you will remember us and bless us good. May we not be discouraged because it has not yet happened. But for sure, as we continue to look unto you without wavering our heart and wavering in our soul, we know that you will surely perform according to your word. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Say a big amen. My name is Apostle Helen Rudokino, and in case you will want to connect with me, and wherever you are watching me from, maybe through the uh, uh, um, uh, Ma through Majesty, or maybe you are just online, I want you to know that I'm available to receive any call from you. I'm available to pray for anyone who thinks he is going through a process. I am available to agree with God with you, so that you will be jacked up again. I assure you that there is always a date and a time when the righteous will be remembered, and that is now. Hallelujah. I'm taking my message from the book of Esther chapter 6. And the Bible said, on that night, from verse 1, on that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king, and it was found written, that Mordecai had told of uh, Big Tana and Teresh, two of the king's uh, ch uh, chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king, uh, Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the out court, outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And, king, and the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rode upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man without whom 
the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Verse 10, Then the king said to Haman, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that seated at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to, to his house, mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wife's men, and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. And while they were, they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlain, and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Well, what, I, what, what, what this scripture is so amazing, it's so awesome how the Lord can deny a whole king sleep. The Lord, the, the, we all know the story about uh, Mordecai, how Mordecai would sit in front of the gate and then Mordecai was one of the Jews who were in captivity and then in this land of the Babylonians, Mordecai found out that a certain rule had been decreed against the Jewish people to, to take them away. And then and then Mordecai had to look for a way to speak that truth to uh, the, 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 the niece uh, that was uh, uh, Esther. And then Esther went into the fasting that we all knew about. And because of that fasting of Esther, many people always now like to do three days dry fasting and then they go and meet the king. So eventually that, that rule was reversed and she saved the life of thousands of uh, the people of God. So Mordecai was always dressed in rag and sits in front of the king's gate. But you know, Mordecai had been walking there even before Haman came in. Haman was somebody who never liked Mordecai. Haman felt that the, uh, 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 something in Mordecai doesn't, doesn't just suit him. He, he was a sort of person that exalts himself, lifts himself up. And then Mordecai knew his God. Mordecai is the sort that does not reference just men because they must be referenced, but he is a God-fearing man. He is not the type that pays lip services to people. You know, many times there are people who don't like to pay lip service. And as long as they don't like to pay lip service, people don't like to reckon with them. So uh, what happened here was that Haman began to look for a way to get rid of Mordecai. He felt very envious whenever he comes around and Mordecai doesn't just honor him. Mordecai doesn't just bow before him and Mordecai just be himself. My God, what I'm trying to say here is this. If you are the type that love to be yourself, just continue to be yourself. Don't join up or hook up with gangs of men who like to be hypocrites, who like to be very schizophrenic. They, they say something here now and the next minute they are something else. Just be yourself in your services with the Lord. Be yourself. Be yourself because when you be yourself, being yourself is going to bring you to a place of honor. In the kingdom today we have so many people who are just very schizophrenic. They are not just being themselves. When they want to sing, they sing with another tune that is not their real voice. When they want to do intercession, they do intercession, they pray with, with other people's languages. You know, they, they borrow them, even borrow the tongues and speak a tongue that they have not really matured to have. There are some who go about cramming even the tongues of others just to make sure that they speak like that person, act like that person and behave like that person, but they do not reckon. They cannot even come closer to the anointing that is upon that person that they are trying to imitate. I am not saying that there's nothing wrong when well, there, there's something wrong when people imitate people. But you see, Christ tells us to be imitators of Christ, not imitators of human beings. 
The church of Christ in these days is becoming very, very counterfeited. People are no more original. Everybody wants to shape their mouth just to, to preach something that will make other people very, very happy and entice their emotion and not getting into their soul. Meanwhile, God wants uh, to us to be connected through the spirit because God is a spirit. And those who worship him have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we see here that Mordecai is a sword that does not like all of those hypocrites. Mordecai is a type that says things the way they are. Mordecai is a type that is so real and real to the core. Mordecai is a type when he's angry, he says, man, I'm angry. And not that when he's angry, he says, oh, God, I'm so happy. He says things the way they are. So people don't normally like to reckon with people who are very honest, very, very tr 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 truthful. So people like this sort of Haman who like to boss around and who like to elevate themselves. My God, in the kingdom of God today, we see people who are parading so many of their, of their business cars, you know, they, well, just a little a little exposure they have, they carry their business cars everywhere, they just want to get attention, they just want to make noise on the Facebook, make noise on LinkedIn, make noise on all of those social media just to show that they have arrived. You see, when you are that way, what's going to happen is this, if you do not come down to the level God wants you so that he can be the one that will set up that table and elevate you, you will crash. I'm betting you and I'm saying it. But there are others who are very humble. The Bible said that God gives grace to the humble and God brings down the pride. So while Mordecai was sitting at that gate, there were other things that had happened that would have eradicated the life of the king, King Ahasuerus. But Mordecai, thank God for people like Mordecai who can see some things going on in the kingdom and they will be very bold to speak it out. Are you hearing me? You see, there, there, there's this adage that people will say, or tell you the, the devil you know is better than the one you don't know. But there is no devil at all, which is even good. Talk less of the one you do not know and the one you know. But the care is a type when he sees, he says it the way it is. And then Mordecai saw that people were planning to take away the life of the king or to poison the king or to do something mischievous to the king. And Mordecai went and revealed it. My God. Because Mordecai is not a type who is so popular with people, so he is not a type who who is very, very, very uh, popular among them. He's unpopular. Do you understand me? Because people don't like those who are very straightforward, those who are honest to them, so they like the counterfeit. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that what Mordecai revealed that prevented the king to be killed even was suppressed. No reward was given to him. By the way, the name Mordecai means a small man. It, it means the worshiper of mass. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because this name is not really the name that Jewish people bear, but it is a name that has been given to him because he was in Babylon. I don't care what name people may have been calling you. I don't care what name people may try to attach you with, with this, which has no originality with you. But one thing is this, no matter what they call you, it will not limit and it will not hinder what God will want to do in your life. Can you say a big amen? When God sets you up and wants to bless you, it, your geographical location doesn't bother anymore. The names that people call you or the names that people give unto you, it doesn't matter anymore. I can can imagine them calling Mordecai every every sort of strange name just to bring him down. That name they call him means a little man. Can you imagine that? Do, do you need to tell a short man again that he's little? Or do you need to tell somebody your name is very insignificant? So attaching that name, little man, means so that they are commonizing him. They are bringing him down so they don't even value whatsoever he has to contribute. Even though he sits in a place of honor with them. Mm. There are people who come around you. When they come around you, they look down on you. They view you from another angle and of disrespect, of dishonor. They don't intend to promote you. They don't intend to promote your work. They don't intend to say good about anything that concerns you. And sometimes I can imagine it gets into us when you are trying to connect with people and the people are not connecting to you. When you are trying to do something good and nobody says what you are doing. Maybe in your family, maybe in your environment, maybe
maybe in your community, but when they want to give honor, they only give to those mm -mm -mm, who are in the same social club with them, those who are in peer groups with them, those who can say the same lies and, and fabricate it, those who wear masks and they are schizophrenic, just like them. So their eyes will go to people like that who are very hypocritical and give them those honors. Last night or two days ago, I was speaking with my own husband. My husband said, honey, can you imagine what God is doing through all of this channel, all the works we are doing? But if we were to be of the sort with them who always are men pleasers and men praisers, they will quickly run to us. I said, yes, yes, yes. You see, he told me, he said, do you see how even in the pastoral forum, where people form leagues and people form gangs and they just identify with those who are just like them? I said, yes, yes, yes. But our faith is not in man. Our faith is unto God, the God of Israel who remembers people. Those who are lowly, God have a way of bringing them up. Those who have been rejected, God have a way. There is a time and there is a season when God Almighty, He will remember you. Can you say a big amen? I was once forgotten, but God picked me from somewhere. He picked me where I was forgotten, where I was rejected, where I was downcast, where people didn't believe in what I say. God picked me, and today he's raising me. That same God will pick you. That same God will make it for you. Where nobody could afford to lift you up and to help you. Mm. God Almighty will remember you. Have you ever been in a, a situation where you have a message? your problem and you are running to your friends to see if they can be of a real help to you and you finish narrating all your story and they just look at you mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do you still have more to say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they only grab all your problem and they don't find a solution to it they only go out and laugh about it have you been in such a situation i've been there before and that is why I can stand in this authority to tell you, don't say everything to everyone. Go on your knees and pray. And go on your knees and pray and pray again. You will see how God <coughs> will visit you. God remembers. Even when people may tend to forget, God remembers. To remember means you have been, you have been dumped, totally forgotten. But somehow the memory of you is brought back into, is, is being recalled. What you have done is being recalled. That means it's been retrieved from where they tried to dump it. So we see in the verse which I've written, I've read in this Holy Bible, that a man like Mordecai, who, who, who tried to, 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 to reveal the, the, the coup d'etat that was coming to the king. That could have aborted his life. Terminated his life. That could have ended up his life. Oh my God. A whole sort of uh, 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 news was hijacked. Buried. Forgotten. But this is the same sort of news. When it comes up, people, I mean, the whole newspapers will carry it. And such a man will be placed in a place of honor and remembered not only by the king himself, but also by the cabinet of the king, or even by the wives of the king, or even by people who are acquaintances to the king. They will remember and they will make sure they fly that news to the king. But how come such a news? Nobody was able to carry it. This could be likened to you. Every good thing you try to do, they try to sabotage it. Every good thing you try to say, they try to sabotage it. Oh my God, there was a time when I used to go to other pastoral meetings when no matter how I make an effort to let my voice be heard, to make a genuine contribution, the one that arrives the minute will always want to make it seem as if I never, I was insignificant because I was the only lady sitting among all the men. And we all know that sometimes some men can be very chauvinistic. So when I sit, among them and i'm making a genuine contribution they don't seem to value what i say why because that's not their wife speaking secondly they don't expect a woman to be intelligent to speak thirdly oh she's just a male woman from africa but god one day remembered me god put them in want on what i was capable of doing and that was ready to raise an offering so they were now compelled to come to me to say, the conference is coming. This is a citywide conference. I would like you to be the one to raise the offering. 
And that day, God surprised them. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say, just to cut a story short, is that a day of remembrance is coming for you. A day of honor is coming. So even though they had planned and they hijacked the news that was carried out by Mordecai to prevent the king from dying, they hijacked it. But there was a day of remembrance that came. And somebody, it's a time for you to rejoice because that which happened to Mordecai is going to happen to you, it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen to us. Where we will be remembered, irrespective of the little name they call us, irrespective of the degrading names they give to us, irrespective of the so 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 name they give to us just to commonize us, it will not matter anymore because when the Lord decides to turn the record. God will not mind anything anybody say. He will not be able to mind anything that any gossip that have gone ahead of you. He is not ready to mind it. There is always a day of remembrance. The Bible said that the very night when the Lord determined to remember Mordecai, God Almighty denied sleep from the eye of the king. The king went to bed and he was denied sleep. He could not sleep. I could imagine him in his executive bed, in his water bed, turning round and round, turning up, down, and not being able to sleep, looking at the ceiling. And then somehow along the line, the Holy Ghost grabbed his son and dumped something in him. He began to go to the chronicle, the book of chronicle, the, 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 talking about the, the stories of the past, where real events have been written. He began to look through the archives. He read and read and read and read and read until he read to the portion where it was discovered that this Mordecai, this little man, this insignificant man, this man that they call the worshiper of mass, my God, my God. Mm -mm -mm. Have you ever sat in a place where you have given real prophecies, where you have laid hands on people and they are blessed, and where you have really ministered to people in deliverance, and people turn and they say, mm, this one, he's a worshiper of what? what, what Mama spirit. Mm, this one, he's casting away demon through demons. Oh, this one, this is this. They call Jesus the same name. They say he was casting demons through the spirit of Belzebub. Are you hearing me, somebody? Have you ever been? Can you imagine how they could call him worshiper of mass? Meanwhile, this was a servant of Jehovah. This man was worshiping the real God that they themselves do not know, but they gave him a name, worshiper of mass. My God, may none of the things that people are calling you ever limit you. May none of the things that people are trying to use to hinder you ever limit you. May none of the things they try to gossip about you ever limit you. May you, risk, may you rise right now. May you be jacked up right now. And know that help is coming from above. That God will remember you. As long as you do not give up, hold on to your faith. God will surely, surely remember you irrespective of what they call you irrespective of the caricature they want to make about you irrespective of how they try to mimic you irrespective of how they put up their schizophrenic faces around you when you are in they make you feel good and the moment you turn your back they, they say all manner of things against you irrespective of all of those blah 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 when the lord wants to bless you when the lord wants to remember you when he wants to recognize your work he's gonna honor you openly my god come and lift up your hands and say god honor me say god Remember me. Say, God, do it for me. In Jesus' name. If you have done that, I want you to know that you have positioned yourself right now to be a channel through which God can bless. You have positioned yourself to, for, for the remembrance to pass, to be, to, to, to be given to you where you've been forgotten. Say a big amen. So the Bible said the king could not sleep, and then the book was brought, and the book was read, and it was discovered that Mordecai, this little man, did something so glorious. This little man was able to get to grab information that saved the life of the king. And the king asked, 
My God, what has been done to such a man that did such a thing for me? I could have been dead by this man, if not for his sake, this little man, this little man. Now, listen, listen to me. You see, sometimes you don't even need to be angry if you are short, because in that short stature that God has given to you, there are something you will accomplish which which long or tall men will not be able to accomplish. There are something, maybe you are a short woman, there are something which you will accomplish which the tall ones will not be accomplish, will not be able to accomplish. So you don't need to even look in fear of yourself. You don't need, you don't need to want to be like somebody else. Hallelujah. So his name, and don't forget in the, in, in, in the old, people give names based on how people look. People give names based, based on what have happened. People give names based, based on the things that are moving around. People just give, so they don't just give names anyhow. So the names that they give relate to something. They are passing out messages through the names that they give. So when they, we are calling him, uh, when, when, they, when they interpreted his name to become a short man, means really probably that he was short. I wasn't there anyway, but I don't know. But the Bible tells me so, that he could have been a short man. Are you hearing me, somebody? So, but irrespective of his shortness, he got vision that others did not have. He was able to, 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 to grab something that would have d destroyed a whole king. God gave him something. God made sure that he was the one that saw it. There is something that God will give to you. And the day, when the day of reckoning comes, God is going to cause those who have denied you, they will see honor coming to you openly. There is something that is only you that God has positioned to be able to deliver that into our generation. It's only me that he has positioned to be able to deliver that thing to my generation. And nobody can hinder it, no matter how they try to fight against it. So this man, Mordecai, who was looked like an ignoble, was able to, to, to reveal that this, this, this whole thing, that, that the king was about to be killed. And he prevented it. So the king, the king said, how can I honor him? What has been given to him? And then the king, while the king was just busy asking his servants what must be done to the man who saved my life, behold, the enemy of Mordecai, the one that wanted that Mordecai would always bow unto him, he came around. My God, my God. And to end up the story, the Bible said the king asked Mordecai, asked Haman, what could be given to the man who have saved the life of the king? What could be given to the man who the king will want to honor? What do you think? So Mordecai, Haman thought, I beg your pardon, Haman thought, okay, who else could the king honor? Is it not me? You see, pride goes before a fall. So if you are the type, it's always arrogant. You are the type. Who thinks that because of you, the church goes forward? Who thinks that because you sing in the choir, that's why you can control the church? If you are that sort of person, be very, very careful. Because pride goes before. Pride goes before what? Dishonor. It goes before a mighty fall. If you do not humble yourself and allow God to be the one to promote you, when you promote yourself to the position you are not meant to be, you will come down. I mean, you will you will really fall. And great will be that fall. So this Haman began to carry himself up and down and say, who else would a king promote except me? Am I not the best among all his people? Am, am I not the best minister? Am I not the best counselor? Am I not the best this? Am I not the best that? Don't forget, this was the man who had gone to pay a huge price so that the people or the Jewish people would be eradicated. They would be taken off. He made a vow that he must take them off from the planet of the earth. But here we see God turning situation around. Through the same person he has rejected. Through the same person that this, this, this Haman have ignored. God turned situation around. My God. God now made it that it was Haman who would not go and dress up Mordecai in the 
whole apparel which he himself prescribed because he was thinking that the king was going to honor him openly he's gonna wear the clothes of the king which the king have used before he's gonna ride on a horse that the king have ridden before and he's gonna wear all of those royal apparel uh, and then and then they're gonna put rings and put goals all around him just to let the person know let the world know that that's the one that the king have chosen so he thought it was gonna be him unfortunately after the king heard from him, the king said, take all of these things you've told me now and go and dress up Mordecai. Make sure you dress him exactly the way you have said so that the honor that you have said must come to Mordecai, the one that have rescued my life from death. My God. I want you to picture it a little bit. It and it is going to be the portion of you and the portion of me. In the presence, in this very year we are in, 2013, God will cause our enemies to be the one that will come and dress us up. My God. I can't, I can't, I can't wait seeing them dressing me with the sort of gold I want to wear. I can't wait seeing them dressing me with the sort of things I want to have. I can't see them building up their home and then letting it go for me. I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, where to receive that i can't wait to see them buying the good cars they want for themselves and then it all it ends up being for me i can't really wait why because the bible says we shall possess the gates of our enemies and i believe it that's why if you are watching out there and then you are making a, you're making a servant of god your enemy or you are making people of god your enemy you are wasting your time you are if you make an enemy with a righteous man or righteous one you are in trouble you are in trouble and I want to address some of you who have been sending, who have, who have been going to Majesty TV, and then you go and make your comments about other men of God. You say, they are not worthy to be in this channel. Who are you to condemn them? Who are you? There are some who, who, who pardon themselves and they say, I am a prostitute this. And then you are making a comment. I mean, by your name already, it signifies who you are. Because whoever will go and call himself prostitute this is writing this. My God, it means a lot to me. It, a prostitute means it's a whore. It means that it is it is somebody who is who opens up to every demon that comes in. So be very careful how you go, and then you write about men and women of God, and then you begin to fly some evil news against them, and then you begin to call, and you want those people to be stopped from the channel. Be very, very careful, because any child of God who have the spirit of Jesus in him wouldn't go about looking for a way to stop the gospel from going forward. Hallelujah. So, you can imagine how Haman tried to stop the move of God in the life of Mordecai. Haman decided that he wanted to wipe away the whole generation, the, the Jewish generation. Can you imagine that? Just because of the hatred he had for Mordecai. That is comparable to those of you who want them, who want those men of God to be out of the channel just because the person could maybe didn't marry you. Or maybe the person you must have gone to maybe lay with them when they were vulnerable. May God forgive us. Hallelujah. So that, is that the reason why the word of God has to be stopped? There are thousand and one people who are out there looking for a way for God to reach out to them. And then just because maybe your heart is there was not achieved. That's why you want us to take them away from the channel. May God be merciful unto you once again. So you are like Haman who wanted to terminate eradicate the whole people of the, the Jewish nation just because of the hatred that he had over Mordecai. And the reason was because Mordecai doesn't bow to him. Mordecai just was being himself. Mm -mm -mm. My God. Mordecai doesn't like to be schizophrenic. Mordecai doesn't like to, to be like a white a painted sepulchre. You say you are inside you is rotten, but every time we see you, you know, white tombed men and women. Mordecai doesn't like those sort of things. He likes to be real. And even in that, his way of living, God remembered him. God honored him because he was faithful. God honored him because he was committed. God honored him because he is not a man worshiper. May God honor those who listen to him. May God honor those who don't just want to be wishy-washy. May God honor those who really will set up this very year that they want to serve God and serve God real. May God honor them. May God lift them all. May where they've been abandoned and dumped, may the Lord remember them. Very, very soon, maybe tonight, an angel is going to visit you. An angel, a messenger of God who have stood before the Lord, is going to bring some good parcel into your home. He's going to 
do it by what man. Hallelujah. He's going to do it. He's going to cause somebody to be denied in sleep. Somebody who have, who have received a good blessing from you, but they hijacked it. Maybe it can be testimony. Maybe it can be that you prayed for them. Maybe it can be that you ministered word of God or word of song to them, and they became healed, but they forgot. God is going to deny them sleep. There are some whom you have blessed, and they have gone to other places to be heaping the honor that is due unto you. God is going to deny them to tonight a very good sleep. God will take away sleep from them because only God gives sleep. The Bible said to his children, he, he gave it what? Sleep and good ones. But when the Lord decides to take away that sleep, you cannot afford to sleep. And when God takes away that sleep, he wants people to remember where he started them with. He wants people to remember those that they have forgotten. He wants the book of record to be brought into accountability. Where those who have done something good will be remembered. And you and me and us who are in the kingdom doing the work of the Lord, we will be totally remembered. Say a big amen. So the king issued a command. And an honor came back to Mordecai for all the good he did. So I am encouraging you tonight that honor is going to come. Honor will surely hit you. As long as you didn't do bad and you were forgotten, not because you did bad, honor will surely come to you. The Lord God Almighty, he will put it in the hearts of men, in the hearts of people, in the hearts of children. They're going to be reconciling with their fathers. He's going to put it in the hearts of husbands. They will begin to reconcile once again with their wives they have dumped. He's going to put it in the, in, in, in the hearts of boss. They will reconcile with all their, 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 their workers they have dumped because they have cherished those who gossip for them or gossip to them. God is going to bring remembrance tonight. An angel who has stood in God's presence is going to go about knocking and hitting the heads of some folks, denying them some sleeps in their home just for you, just for me, so that, they can, so that we can be remembered. So do not be stressed up anymore. This is the season for remembrance. This is the season, this is the year when the works that we have done collectively in the kingdom of God will be remembered. When what you have done personally as a child of God and you've been forgotten for your family, when it will be remembered and honor will come. Say a big amen. Say honor, my God. Say dignity is coming back to me in this very year, 2013. If you have prayed that prayer and you believe it, just look up unto him and wait for your season. This very year, 2013, you will see how God will lift you. And when he lifts you, remain faithful and remain committed. In Jesus' name. I have preached the word of God to you. I have spoken to you like my friend. Walk in this integrity and look unto him. And surely, 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 you call back to tell us all the good things that God has done for you this year. Be mightily blessed. I look forward to being a blessing to you again. Thank you for listening and bye for now.